Hey there folks, Joe DeSanto here. Uh, thanks for joining me in another Quicken video. Actually, this is a Quicken Mac video and I am going to be talking about reports in Quicken Mac and you know, generally what you wanna know about them, how to customize them, and how to get them to look the way you want. Uh, so it's a really important video actually because the reports are ultimately what you're after. They're, they're the thing that delivers the digestible information uh, from all the data entry. So uh, I'm sure if you started using Quicken, you quickly will be like, I got to understand these reports things. All right. But before that, if you have a chance and you like my content, please give me an old like and subscribe. That really helps me out. And also, I want to let you know, I have some um, membership tiers now on YouTube, and these include uh, essentially Quicken more advanced videos, or more advanced Quicken videos. Uh, so if you like my Quicken content, but you want to go a little bit deeper and you have more questions, there probably are videos uh, to answer the questions you have in the uh, membership tiers. The first tier gives you those videos. The second tier both gives you those videos, but also allows you to request I make a specific Quicken video for you if you have a specific question on how to set something up or how something works. And I'll prioritize that uh, within my long list of Quicken videos that people have asked for over the years. Um, okay, so without further ado, let's jump into the video. All right, we're in Quick and Mac here, and uh, we're going to be looking at reports. So essentially, Quicken is, you know, it's a big database of information, essentially financial transaction information. We download transactions, we categorize them, and inevitably we want that information in a format that's readable and, and helpful and so on. And that comes in form of the reports. All right. So if you go here, or you can also go, I think over here somewhere, and, uh, right there, reports, uh, you're going to get the same options. And Quicken, both PC and Mac, has a bunch of sort of, you know, pre-designed reports. There's all sorts of crazy reports, but ultimately, um, you know, there's a couple main ones that you use, and I'm going to use the main, main one uh, for the example of this video, which is the cash flow report right here. Uh, so, you know, Quicken really is to a degree like, you know, a professional level bookkeeping software. So in, in some and a lot of the stuff in there does the terminology relates to that. So the cash flow report is akin to, you know, in accounting, what we, make, we might call an income statement or even a profit and loss. There are some distinctions between those terms, but by and large, they give you the money in, the money out, and the net result, right? So when we put all this information in Quicken, we are looking for a few things, but one of the big picture things is how much did I make, how much did I spend, and did I make more than I spent, did I have a net positive result? If you did, you know, by and large, that is your savings for the year, regardless of what account it is in. If you didn't and you, uh, you spent more than you made, now you have a negative net result, and you are uh, you increased essentially your debt, you know, for the for the year, or you reduced the value, you reduced your net worth. If your net worth is zero and you had a negative result, you're going to have gone into debt. If you had you know positive net net worth, but for the year you were negative, you would have reduced your net worth. Um, but in that, you know, that's one you know metric we want. Did we did we save money or lose money? But also, it's like, okay, well, what did we spend our money on specifically, and uh, can we optimize that and be more efficient in our spending, spend less next year, save more, and so on? So, uh, Quicken essentially keeps us accountable, you know, quote unquote accounting. Um, to what is our hopeful, you know, budget or spending plan or whatever. Um, and the report is really where you can go look to, to get that information, okay? So out of the gate, the report uh, has certain, you know, factors turned on or off. And, and you can customize those factors and customize what you're looking at over here in the edit menu, all right? I'm going to bring this a little bit more center now. 
Um, so in the edit menu, we have a bunch of options. We have the date range. Usually uh, the standard cash flow report would be year to date, which would be, you know, January 2025 to today, which is March 2nd. But I can change it to be all dates if I wanted to. Um, I can also uh, change which accounts, you know, i.e. accounts over here that Quicken is utilizing to collect the data. Most of the time you want all accounts on because you want Quicken to gather information from all the accounts. But sometimes, especially if you have a business set up in here, maybe you only want your business accounts and the you know, income and expense information from that. You know, so you could select individual accounts here. Uh, and if you watch my video on separate accounts, by default, separate accounts are, are left off your stand report, but you can turn it on. Um, so see, it says accept separate accounts. So there's that. Now, category is the same. You generally want all your categories, but if you only wanted to look at the details of some categories, you could turn categories on and off. Same for tags. Uh, I don't know if I have a video on tags yet, but I'm gonna do one and explain what they are. But if you're newish to Quicken, you're probably not using tags yet anyway. But you could just keep all those on. Pays, you could actually uh, turn some pays on and off. Uh, in If you were gonna do that, your pay data would have to be pretty consistent. So I always leave all that on. And then advanced has some other options. You have what's called the organization of the report. You can have an income versus expense report or a cash flow report. I'll show you the difference of those two things here. You can include transfers or exclude transfers. I have a video on transfers and how they work and it touches upon this aspect. Uh, I'm gonna include the transfers. You can include reconciled, cleared, not cleared. You would generally have all those on. And so as you can see, you can customize the, re the reports very specifically, which is really helpful. More so, you can actually customize the report far more specifically in Quicken than you can in, say, QuickBooks, like professional accounting software. So that's one thing. Um, now, also, if you have all years on, you can now also do an interval and you can break down your report by year. You could also break it down by month, quarter, weeks, whatever. Um, you can, columns, oh, look at this. You can do different kinds of columns, uh, over here. I don't think I've ever used that. Uh, oh, I see. So the column can be, you can sort of subdivide by tag or pay or account. I'm using time as in the dates, you know, that's the most common. Um, you can change what you see in the rows here, but most of the time you're going to want categories. And I'm going to show you in a bit how categories affect the report and so on. So you can do all these customizations and then you can save that customization uh, to your My Reports area. So you can put a name in here, Joe's Report, and you can save it. Now, this actually comes in very handy because you might end up doing a multiple customizations for different purposes. Like you might have one report that you're going to send to your accountant, but you that doesn't look the same as the report you like for yourself. You might do a report just for your capital gains for your stocks and have those isolated. You might do a report just for your business. Um, and once you do that customization, you can save it and then you can go over here to my reports and you don't have to go in and customize it again. OK, so now I want to make it clear that the report is something that you're probably going to open up and look at for a while and be like, okay, cool, this is helpful. Yeah, I see the, the summary of info. But at some point you might say, geez, I, I really wish my report didn't organize things like this because I would really rather see things subtotaled in a certain way, you know, that I'm thinking in my head and Quicken does it in this other way. And then to go get my info that I want, I got to go get a calculator out and do more addition and subtraction. Well, the way that you customize what you're seeing in report is by designing your categories in a certain way. So I'm going to show you here. I, and I'm going to make the caveat right now that these are my categories in Quicken Mac. And the way I get the report I want is it sounds weird. I use expense categories for everything. When you go to make a category, um, if you go to make one, 
Quicken, of course, gives you the option for an income category or an expense category. Uh, naturally, you would maybe make income, income, you know, and expense, expense. Now, I'm going to show you why, what, why that creates a problem for me um, and, so, and why I make accounts all expense accounts. But you can do it whatever way you want. It's very flexible. Um, so anyway, you might see here that, you know, I have business activity as a higher level category. And then under it, I have business income and business expense as subcategories. And then I have further subcategories in there. Well, in my report, you're going to see here that that is mimicked and the report is delivering the information in the way that I have the categories organized. So, and I can even um, collapse the ca the categories in the report the same way I have the, can collapse the categories in the category creator dialog box. So I think quickly you can see is like, hey, if you know you want your business activity to be kind of in its own category, you know, own section with subtotals versus your personal activity, organizing your categories in that way is the way to get your report to deliver the information in the format you like. Now, more on that and, and now to talk a little bit about why I use expense categories all the time. So uh, back to the edit section of the report in the advanced. There were these two organizational uh, items, one called income and expense and one called cash flow. Okay, so income and expense organizes the categories solely by whether or not or organizes the report and delivers info in a format solely by whether or not your uh, your category is 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 set up as an income category or an expense category now for illustration purposes i made this one category in my categories income so i could show you this report so when i put it on income and expense no matter how i have it organized it's first going to throw all the income categories up here and all the expense categories up here and you might be like, hey, well, that makes sense. Why would you do it any other way? And for you, that might work. Here's the reason I don't like it as an, an example. So I have business income, real estate income, and personal income. And then I have business expense, real estate expense, and personal expense. I don't necessarily want all those incomes grouped together at the top with a sum total and then... Uh, expenses all at the bottom of the port in a sum total. I want my business income and business expense in a, in a section subtotaled so that I know the net of my business. Then I want my real estate income and expense in a section subtotaled so I know the net result of my real estate and then so, so on for the personal. So because I want that, I had to go through and sort of organize the categories in the way I do it. And, and hence, the only way to do that in the Mac, unfortunately, is to make them all expense categories. I guess you could technically make them all income categories too. Um, but, and so that is the way I do it. And I'm gonna explain a little bit more about that in a sec, but I'm gonna show you first the cash flow uh, option. Now the cash flow option is unique in that the reason I can do all my categories as expense categories is because even though a category is expense, I can put credits and debits in there. Okay, and let me give you a good example of why I might do that. Say I have a clothing expense category, right? And I go to, you know, I don't know, the clothing store and I buy some clothes and it shows up as a transaction. I categorize it to that expense and I spend a hundred dollars. But then I go back to the same store and I return half the clothes. I decide I don't want them. I get a new transaction, you know, from my credit card or bank, same store, but it's a credit, not a debit out of the account, meaning money came back to me. Well, I could put that in a refunds income category, or I could put that in the same clothing expense category. And then when I run my report, the net result of my clothing activity was I spent 50 bucks. But if you go to the detail, I first spent $100 and then I went and did a returning of $50 back. Right, so I can put cash in and cash out into that one category. If I'm on the income and expense category, um, I am going to see my 
clothing expense with the net result. If I'm on the cash flow inflows or outflows category, I'm going to see my expense account clothing up here with a deposit in it, an inflow, and then I'm going to see the same category below uh, under expense with a debit in it of $100. Right? So now I got my returns up here, my expense down here. I don't like that. I don't want that. That's not easy to read for me, you know. I'm gonna, here, I'll show you an illustration with this transfer account. I got money into this transfer account here. It puts it up top of the inflow. I got money out down here, puts it in there, uh, the debit in there as an outflow. If I go to edit this and I go back to income and expense, it puts the transfers combined down here and I got money in there, money out, it nets to zero and there's no inflow up here, okay? So that's the difference between income uh, and expense versus cash flow. I would always be on income and expense myself. Now, Quicken PC, I got to hand it to the PC. It's got additional options there for you to customize your report called report groups. So, and with those, I don't have to make everything an expense category there. I can have income and expense, and then I can still organize it the way I want using uh, uh, um, category groups but the Mac doesn't have category groups. So this is my solution using all expense categories. Um, okay, I think actually I covered, uh, well, I guess I'll just finish out by saying I, um, I use all expense categories instead of income and expense. I made this other income category be income just for illustration purposes. I'm always on the income and expense formatting of the report. And you can see all my activity here shows up under expense. And I, I wish I didn't have to see that because it is sort of misleading, but I can get my income. My income shows up as a positive number. My expense shows up as a negative number. And I see a subtotal for each of my sections. And that's the way I like to read it. Um, now this other income, like I said, I made it uh, just to illustrate that if I had this set up as an income account, it would pop up here under income. Now I'm gonna go back to my category area, uh, my category dialog box. I'm gonna take this other income, I'm gonna edit it, okay? I'm gonna make it an expense and I'm gonna make it a subcategory of personal activity, personal income. I'm gonna hit save. And now when I go back to my report uh, over here, I don't have any income up there. If I go there, there's the other income, right? Under personal activity, personal income, personal expense. So I like to see also positive numbers for income, negative numbers for expense. Visually, I like to see that even though standard accounting practice would not be that. You'd have positive numbers for income, positive numbers for expense, but the report would know, hey, I subtract the expenses from you know the income. Uh, but, I, but this way you get to see positive and never negative numbers, which helps me, and I'm sure if it helps me, it'd help many. Uh, last thing I'll say about the Mac reports is my big beef with them is this bar you cannot pull out and go wider. This column width is determined by the longest word of the longest category you have. So you can see all full category names but it doesn't create much space in there and it doesn't allow you to change this margin. This report is a little visually hard for me to read. Um, I wish I could you know, move this out. You can do that in the PC version. Ironically, you can move it in, which I don't know why you'd want to do, um, but just FYI, if you're just tooling around with this and you're like, man, I really wish there were more space in here because I really, it's a little tight. Unfortunately, in the Mac version, you cannot change that. Um, okay, I think that's pretty good for the reports. I mean, that's an intro to reports. I'm gonna have a more advanced reports video uh, where I talk about different types of reports and maybe help you do some of those customized reports like strictly capital gains or strictly your business. There's also um, different ways uh, to look at the reports uh, that we could look at. And if you're using Quick and Mac for business, I would explain you know, some of that stuff as well. But this is kind of the basics, and uh, I hope it was helpful as always, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.